Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to this week's virtual Awana lesson. I hope that you're all having a wonderful time off of school and home with your families for the Christmas season. I hope you're all excited for Christmas. You have your trees all ready, your lights all up, and I just hope that that's a great time of year for you this year. As you know, we're not having Awana clubs uh, for the month of December, so we're going to have another live stream lesson today. I'm going to keep this one shorter. We're not going to do the examples of how to say your verses in that. Um, for any of you parents who are wondering, you are allowed to listen to your kids' sections at home. Uh, on the last video that we played, I did a um, kind of an example of that with all four of my kids running through each of the books and how to listen to a section and sign off on them. Uh, we're so proud of all you kids and all the work you've done on your books, and so keep up the good work. Uh, today's lesson, we are going to continue with our true story of Christmas, okay? And so if you remember last week, we went through some of the stories of the Bible, uh, some of the things you hear that aren't actually in the Bible, right? If you remember from last week, the little drummer boy and some of the other things, the donkey and all that. But uh, this week we're going to continue. And so we're going to talk about uh, the wise men and their gifts. And we're going to talk about the true gift of Christmas. Uh, so I'm going to keep this video a lot shorter. Hopefully you all can watch this one and definitely take away and learn from it. Um, also, parents, I just want to mention, if you did not receive an email from me this last week, please send an email to awanagbc-1 at yahoo.com and I will get you on our Awana parent email list. Uh, I've been trying to get you out updates and that way um, we can let you know, hopefully that we'll be back in person the first week of January. Um, but if not, then I'll be able to keep you updated as to when we will be virtual and when we will be back in person. All right, let's get into the lesson. So we boys and girls all remember the story of the wise men in the Bible, right? In the book that we find this in, who can guess? Remember from last week, there were two books in the New Testament that tell the story of Jesus' birth. One was Luke and one was Matthew. And Luke told us about the shepherds that we learned about last week. And the one who talks about the wise men is actually Matthew. So in Matthew 2.1, we hear this. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. And these wise men had special gifts for baby Jesus. But the amazing thing about this is that the trip of these wise men was prophesied over 1,000 years before it happened. And if you want to guess, who can guess what book in the Bible this prophecy is from? I'll give you a hint. If you open your Bible and turn to it, it's kind of right in the middle. It is in the Old Testament. It's a book with a lot of songs in it and written by King David. And this prophecy is from the book of Psalm, chapter 72, 10 and 11. Over 1,000 years before this happened, God told David to write down that the kings of Tarshish and of the Isles shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him, and all nations shall serve him. And boys and girls, we know that's true because Jesus Christ is the king of kings. He's the only one in history who everyone on earth will fall down and worship someday. And we know in our Bibles, it tells us in the book of Revelation that at the end, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so he is the king who is coming, who God had promised. It was all part of God's plan to offer salvation to mankind. And so we found another prophecy, this one from the book of Isaiah. And this one, Isaiah wrote down over 700 years before Christ was born. Isaiah 9, 6 says this, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called the Wonderful Counselor the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And again, God throughout the Old Testament was preparing the way for Jesus. He was telling people that there was going to be a Savior. And what are we going to be saved from? It's from our sins, right? And so you boys and girls who have been coming to Awanas and listening to the lessons and reading in your book, you understand that the biggest problem in our world is sin. And so we needed a Savior from it. And that was the purpose of Jesus coming. And Jesus is described in the Bible as the Lamb of God. And the Lamb in the Old Testament was used as a sacrifice to pay for the price for sins and to offer people forgiveness of sins. And so it was prophesied before Jesus even came 
This is another prophecy from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 53 says this, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. And boys and girls, this prophecy was about Jesus Christ being the Lamb of God and the Savior of the world. And when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming to him in the, in the New Testament, John said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. And boys and girls, the reason that Jesus could do that, the reason that Jesus came down to earth and was born as a little baby is so that he could live a perfect life without sin. He was a perfect lamb without blemish and without spot. He lived his whole life without sinning. And then because of that, he was able to take the punishment in our place. It'd be like if you boys and girls did something bad, if you stole or if you did something and you went before a judge and they said, okay, there's a punishment. You have to pay a fine and it's a thousand dollars and you kids don't have any money. You don't have any way to pay that. But if your mom or your dad or someone who has that money says here, and they pay the judge for you, they can pay that price for you, and you can be forgiven, and you can be let go and released. And so Jesus Christ, because he did not have sin in his life, because he was perfect in the Lamb of God, he was able to take our punishment for us. He was able to take the punishment of sin on himself and offer to us forgiveness. And so, boys and girls, the true gift of Christmas is Jesus Christ and eternal life. And most of you boys and girls know this verse. This is one of the most popular verses in your Bible, in your Awana books. It's Romans 6.23. And it says this, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And boys and girls, that's what we're talking about, that punishment that the judge hands down. There's a punishment for sin, and it's death. And so Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. He took that for us. He paid that price through his death on the cross, and through what he did for us. And so the good news is that because of that, we can have eternal life. There's another verse in the book of Peter that talks about this, where it says, For as much as ye know, you were not redeemed with corruptible things, such as silver and gold, from vain conversation received by tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. And boys and girls, that's what I'm talking about. So just like if you were trying to get out of stealing something and you had to pay a fine, that would redeem you. But Peter says you can't be redeemed with silver and gold. You can't pay the price for your sin with money. It has to be through the sacrifice and through the blood. And the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot is how we are offered that forgiveness. And boys and girls, that is the reason why when Jesus arrived here in Bethlehem, the first people who God sent the angels to tell were shepherds right? It wasn't the most important people or the most popular people in Israel. He sent the good news to the shepherds because they were the ones who were watching the lambs who were going to be sacrificed to allow salvation and allow the forgiveness of sins. And, and so boys and girls, to end this lesson, I want to let you know how you can accept that gift. We read in Romans 6.23 that the gift of God is eternal life. And the way to receive that is through asking Jesus, asking the Lamb of God to forgive you for your sins. Now, the first step is A, admit that you are a sinner and ask for forgiveness. We know that all of us have committed sins. The Bible tells us in Romans 3.10, there is none righteous, no, not one. It tells us in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We know that every single person on earth has committed sins that are deserving of a punishment. So number one, the first step is to admit that we are sinners. The second step is to believe that Jesus Christ offers us salvation, to believe that he's the one who died to take that punishment for us. And in Romans 5, 8, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And we know that Acts 16, 31 tells us to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And boys and girls, when we talk about getting saved, when we talk about putting your faith in Jesus, this is what we mean. 
It's about praying to him, believing that he died for you so that you could have forgiveness. And then finally, the C of ABC of salvation is to call upon the name of the Lord and ask him to save you. And Romans 10, 9 tells us that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So boys and girls, if that's something you've never done, please talk to your parents. Ask them how you can accept that gift. Ask them how that you can have salvation so you can know you have eternal life. And that will be the greatest possible gift you could ever receive at the Christmas season. It's the whole reason for Christmas was that Jesus Christ came down to this earth so he could offer us salvation. I thank each and every one of you boys and girls for watching the lesson this week. I hope that you will take this all to heart. I hope that you'll continue to study in your books and to learn your verses. And I hope that we can get back together for our class soon. I'm going to say a prayer and then we'll be ended for today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this class today, Lord. I thank you for all the boys and girls who were able to tune in and to watch this lesson. We thank you for the Bible, Lord, your word to us. Thank you for the true story about how Jesus Christ came to this earth, how he was born of a virgin, how he was here for a reason, Lord, to offer us salvation. Thank you that you offered us that way. Thank you that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God and that we can have forgiveness of our sins and salvation through that. I ask you, please keep all these boys and girls healthy. Please help them to continue studying in their books and bring us all back together safely. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.